SBN Sports Business Now. SBN is a division of Row 27, the digital sports marketing company, celebrating five years of creating TV spots, intro videos, and microsites for over 150 teams. See our work at row27.com. And by FanMaker, digital marketing tools for sports teams. Featuring FanMaker Rewards, the most comprehensive and popular fan loyalty and reward system. Learn more about our apps at FanMaker.com. Sports Marketing Now. Hello, friends, and welcome to Sports Marketing Now. In for Holly Kosky, my name is Max Huber. Here on Sports Marketing Now, we're going to cover all the hot topics in the sports marketing world right here on sportsbusinessnow.com slash live. Joining me today, I have Craig Pittens, the Senior Associate Athletic Director for Marketing and Public Relations from the University of Oregon, along with Josh Duboff, founder of the Sports Business Exchange. Thanks for joining me, guys. Craig, how are things going over there in Eugene? It's a beautiful, sunny day here in Eugene, Oregon, Max. Nothing wrong with that. It's uh, it's warming up a little bit here in Minneapolis, but uh, we are still in winter. Josh, how are things with you? Good. Uh, also starting to get nicer over here, so very excited to uh, have opening day here in New York for both teams and uh, to get things started for the spring. Very good. Well, we're going to hop right into this. Our first topic we're going to talk about today is a tequila brand, El Jimador, releases a limited edition soccer branded bottles. For the second consecutive year, El Jimador Tequila has released a limited edition soccer themed bottle. As the official tequila sponsor of Major League Soccer, the U.S. men's and women's national teams, and the annual U.S. tour of the Mexican national team, the brand will distribute the 750 milliliter packaging to kick off the soccer season for a limited two month period in key markets nationwide. The bottles will be available in three varieties, with each featuring the team colors and logos of the MLS, Mexican national team, and the U.S. national soccer team. Craig, we're going to start with you. What does this do for brand awareness for El Jimador Tequila? Well, I think it, it does uh, a little bit for both. It helps out the MLS, and it definitely helps out tequila as well, because you're talking about a brand recognition for MLS that they need just as much as, as a tequila company would need in this case. So I think it actually makes a lot of sense. Definitely, uh, you know, soccer continues to grow and they're going to continue to look for avenues to, to creatively market themselves and brand themselves. I don't think tequila would necessarily work for every brand. I don't think it, obviously, in, in the college space, definitely not going to work. Uh, but it, it definitely it seems to work for them. You know, I'm, I'm just curious as to why you have a non-branded glass up there, Max. I mean, you, you need to do something with that. I need to have SBN or Row 27 on it. Come on. I definitely need that. Maybe I can get my, a beer sponsor of my own here. So you think it's effective. Josh, what are your thoughts on the effectiveness of this, uh, this tequila branding with these soccer teams? Uh, I like it too, for the most part. Uh, I still uh, am not so accustomed to seeing uh, tequila sponsorships going with uh, our sports teams, but it makes sense. Uh, Gatorade's done it in the past across the NFL. Uh, Budweiser is doing it. Miller Lite's done it. Uh, there's no real reason why they shouldn't be able to do it as well. So uh, I think it's, I think it's a good fit for them. Uh, the bottles look really nice too. I was impressed by the design. Uh, so I'm sure they'll find it to be uh, very successful. Josh, you mentioned Budweiser. They're rolling out uh, over 142 million cans and bottles nationwide with the MLB logo and with 23 of the 30 team logos on there. They've got the Clydesdales involved. So they're doing a big push with baseball marketing. Craig, what are your thoughts on this one with Budweiser and uh, the Major League Baseball market? Great activation. Take advantage of it. Obviously, baseball and, and beer sponsorship have been around since baseball and beer have been around. Uh, they kind of go hand in hand, and it makes perfect sense. You know, I'm guessing one of the seven teams that is not included would be the Milwaukee Brewers uh, with Miller Park. They're probably not on the Anheuser-Busch train uh, exactly on that. But definitely something that is going to pique people's interest. I, I don't know if anybody is specifically going out to purchase uh, more beer because of the, of the fact that it has Major League Baseball logos on it. But I, it definitely, uh, it definitely is going to uh, catch your eye when you're in the store. The only concern you have, and and you know we deal with this in the college space, is uh, 
once you start putting major league logos and you, you have that association with beer, it, it's a slippery slope. You know, what, how far can it go? And I think that's something that you have to just be aware of. You know, cans, are they that for a limited time, that big of a deal? Probably not. But if the cans were consistently uh, on, on the, attached to logos, you would have probably an issue. Thanks, Rick. Josh, what are your thoughts? Is this going to make people go out and buy more Budweiser because it has their team's logo on it or the MLB logo? I don't know about uh, more sales because of it from a, a retail perspective, but I think in stadium it's a really cool uh, takeaway to, to get a commemorative uh, cup with, uh, excuse me, yeah, a commemorative can with uh, your team's logo on it. Um, I know I have one from the last season uh, at Chase Stadium. Uh, they had a commemorative uh, bottle for that. And I, I think it's just a, a real nice way for collectors to have something either for their team or people who collect cans and bottles uh, to have something very unique. Uh, so therefore, I think it's a good idea from that perspective. Uh, does it create uh, more awareness and, and more sales for uh, the average fan who drinks Budweiser anyway? Uh, I'm not sure about that. I know being you know, a, a key fan. note on that, if you're going to do the can and you're going to collect it, make sure you drain all the liquid out of the can first. You can do that by puncturing a little hole in the bottom. My dad found out the hard way uh, with a, a Robin Yount commemorative Coca-Cola can on his 3,000th hit. I don't think my dad completely drained it or didn't really get that. And uh, later when he found it in a drawer, he was a little disappointed that everything else in the drawer was now full of Coca-Cola. So make sure to, if you're doing that at home, Make sure to poke a hole in it. Not only are we giving you sports marketing tips, but we're also informing you on life decisions. So thank you, Craig. And I'm expecting a University of Oregon cup that I will proudly display here on set. Already in the mail. Perfect. Moving on, we're going to talk uh, a little more baseball with the St. Louis Cardinals. They gave fans a chance to finalize the 2013 uniforms. So the fans gave the opportunities to put the finishing touches on the uniforms by allowing them to decide which color cap the players will wear during road games this season. The team has taken a new approach to gauging fan sentiment by adding a social media polling option to the more traditional web vote that you've seen throughout the years. The team's Twitter followers had a chance to sway the final outcome in a one-day Twitter vote. The votes are still being tallied. In their first game on the road, they wore red caps. Uh, they, had, they had the red option, a blue option, uh, the last game of a road series option. Um, Josh, I'm going to start with you. What, what do you think the effectiveness of the fan engagement is on this for social media? Uh, I, I like this a lot, actually. Uh, I wasn't sure how I thought about it when I first heard about it, but uh, I, I like it a lot, especially since it's, it actually affects something going on in the field without actually affecting anything that's going on in the field. Uh, I know I just repeated myself, but you, know, you get to actually feel like you're a part of what's going on uh, on the baseball field with what the color of the cap is. Uh, but really, that's not going to make a difference in terms of the wins and losses of the teams or the strategy. But it's this real close connection with the team. And it's like, yeah, you know what? I had a little bit of influence on, on what happened there. So I'm glad they picked my, my color. Maybe they didn't pick my color, and I'll have to be more engaged next time as well. Very good. Craig, your thoughts? Conceptually, great idea. Execution-wise, not, not so sure. Because where's the, where's the transparency? They, this contest took place on March 26, and there's still not a winner, and it was a two-day contest? I, I don't know. I guess if I'm a fan of the St. Louis Cardinals and I participate in the contest, I want to see real time what the results are going to be. And I want to further engage by stuffing the ballot box for whatever hat I choose. And without that capability, without that transparency, you really have to question it. I guess people are just skeptical of, of those type of contests because you start to wonder if the decision was already made and this is just a, a grab to get more people engaged. So I, I, I like the idea. I'm not sure about the execution. And I agree with you. With the world that we live in, everybody wants that up-to-date, uh, real-time situation. So the fact that you're not seeing that and, like you said, they don't have a result, it's, uh, it's very interesting. Especially what might get interesting is when you get some of these players who are very superstitious and might like yes. to wear a certain color hat, you're going to run into some issues there. Any, any thoughts on that one, guys, or we'll, we'll move on? Baseball players are notoriously superstitious. Uh, you know, and, and I think it, it's a great idea. Anytime you can engage with your fans uh, on something uniform-related, it, it makes a big difference. You know, I, 
it's something that we've kicked around here a little bit, but we're pretty scripted out in terms of what we're going to do, and uh, I'm not sure that we would we would uh, go that route. Yeah, I mean, if there's anyone that knows anything about uh, jerseys and uniforms, it's anyone at, at Oregon. So I'll uh, I'll second whatever uh, Craig said. <laughs> I hear you there. Well, sticking with baseball, being that it's a, it's, it's opening s- season right now, uh, Head & Shoulders wants to own the strikeout for an Old Spice scent launch. Marketers generally try to avoid striking out and play it down when they do, but Procter & Gamble wants to own the moment. All 35,000-plus times it happens in the MLB this year as part of a campaign behind Head & Shoulders with Old Spice. Playing on the double meaning of the sense and strikeouts, Head & Shoulders builds this as the season of the whiff in the new TV, digital, social, brand integ- integration, outdoor, and cause marketing effort. The brand will encourage fans to use the hashtag whiff with their team's Twitter handle each time a pitcher for their team strikes out an opponent. Procter & Gamble will give $1 for each strikeout to reviving baseball in inner cities and fuel social media by giving the MLB club, whose fans rack up the most whiff tweets monthly an additional ten thousand dollars for local chapters so this is another great integration of social media uh, with that cause marketing effort so craig what are your thoughts on what old spice and procter and gamble is trying to do here it's a swing and a hashtag with uh, i think it's far too contrived it definitely is something that I, I love the component of giving back that that's a great feature of it but if you're trying to get fans to do something and it's sponsor related, fans are turned off on that on social media. Uh, just speaking from personal experience, anytime you try to integrate something like this and you're changing a, a, a term, so we're not to refer to it as a strikeout anymore, it's now a heads and shoulders with, not gonna happen. Uh, fans are gonna refer to it whatever they want to. I, I think it's a nice gesture. Uh, I'm curious as to activation. The other component of this is is that you're talking about something that they're trying to do with Major League Baseball and Major League Baseball is a little bit different in terms of how they handle sponsorship in, in league wide. Brilliant move on head, heads and shoulders part because they're capitalizing on the other teams uh, and it's very similar to for example of a coach of the year award. Liberty Mutual sponsors the coach of the year award. Liberty Mutual is now a sponsor at the University of Oregon. So when Liberty Mutual sponsors an award and wants us to activate on their behalf, we're not going to do it because they're not affiliated with us, but they're getting a free ride at a lot of different places. And so I think it, from heads and shoulders perspective, a great move, but I just, I'm very, very skeptical about people actually utilizing it. Craig, I really like the insight on there. And like you t- mentioned, it does have that nice aspect to it where they are giving back. Uh, but you also brought in, you know, they're trying to, to really dig in with this marketing effort and campaign on Twitter where people might not buy into it. Uh, Josh, what are your thoughts on this? Actually, the, the last time I was on, we spoke about uh, Capital One's March Madness campaign. And, and this almost seems similar to me in really being a little um, disingenuous into really connecting with the, the fans as well. Uh, I, Head and Shoulders and Old Spice, just from a pure marketing perspective, seem like a really interesting uh, relationship to put together. I wouldn't necessarily put them in the same spectrum in terms of uh, the target market. So I'm interested to see just from a purely marketing perspective how that works together and, and a branding perspective if that's really going to be a good fit for them. Uh, but in terms of Major League Baseball, uh, again, I hate to just agree with what Craig said, but I, I do feel that it's a, a little bit of a far stretch in terms of uh, where they can really make the whiff be something that people are going to associate with. Uh, head and shoulders. Yeah, I hear you. And then, uh, you know, last year they had Joe Maurer involved in a lot of their head and shoulders campaign. This year they've got C.J. Wilson. So they are using the pitch man perspective as well uh, with the with the video aspect and the Twitter aspect. It'll be interesting to see how it works out and to see the response from fans out there. Yeah, I, think I wish be, they would have uh, spent more money on a, on a pitch man. Uh, you know, I think C.J. Wilson is not exactly a household name unless you play fantasy baseball. Uh, so, I, you know, to me, go out and get a, a old school fireball and pitcher if you really want to make it. No, CJ Wilson doesn't even average a, a strikeout per inning. I mean, get, get somebody who's averaging more than a strikeout per inning who just throws absolute gas. And I, I think that would have been a, more of a, a perfect marriage. I like the fact they went and got a pitcher, but get, get somebody who gets a lot of strikeouts. 
Josh, what was your comment going to be there? So I, I just think it's, uh, I think it'd be really funny and more in line with Old Spice, actually, if they uh, found a, a batter or two who strikes out a lot, maybe like a, I think Ryan Howard strikes out pretty frequently, and, and, and every time that he whiffed be the, the whiffs. But I, I understand why they did a pitcher. You want to uh, give someone credit for doing something good, not necessarily doing something bad. Definitely hear where you guys are coming on that. We're going to move on now to the NFL, where the New York Giants make a rare move and extend their brand to a health center in what is believed to be the first among NFL clubs. One of the league's most venerable teams is extending its brand into health care and fitness. The first Hackensack UMC Fitness and Wellness Center, powered by the Giants, will open this December in Maywood, New Jersey, about five miles from the team's home field. It's a very large footprint for this facility health rehabilitation wellness and education center will have everything from occupational therapy and kids swim lessons to instruction in zumba and healthy cooking uh the new york giants senior vice president and chief marketing officer mike stevens called the project the first brand extension in the team's 88 year history adding that he had been searching for extensions in health related businesses as far back as 2003 when he was with the washington redskins so I'm going to start with you, Josh. What are your thoughts on this with the Giants attaching their names to a health and fitness center in New Jersey? Uh, I was I was actually born in, in New York, but I, I grew up in New, North New Jersey, uh, about 20 minutes away from uh, Giant State, what was then Giant Stadium, and uh, Maywood is very close to uh, where I grew up. And so I'm very familiar with just the area in general, and there's certainly a lot of Giants fans around up there. Uh, there, you, you're very visible, and you can see uh, the Giants brand, whether it be just on jerseys or just people talking about them. They're, they're a very popular team. A lot of the uh, the coaching staff and the players also live uh, in the greater Bergen County area, which is where Maywood uh, is. Uh, this is this doesn't really come as much as a surprise to me. I think it's a very good extension of their brand, uh, especially for the Giants. Uh, they also do a, uh, a run of champions, which is health-related. Uh, it's run by the New York Roadrunners, but it's a, a New York Giants race. Uh, the uh, the Jets are not involved in it, even though it's at uh, the New Meadowlands uh, Stadium, their MetLife. Uh, but, you know, it's a race I ran last year that was done very well. Uh, I'll be doing it again this year. And this whole focus on health and fitness uh, is not totally uh, new for the Giants. Putting their name on a building is new. Uh, but I, I really like it. Uh, nothing's ever totally permanent. They can take it down if something goes wrong or if they're not really getting the return that they expect off of it. So it seems like a, a really interesting step. Uh, and they'll definitely get, uh, the building at least will get added publicity because it says Giants on it as opposed to just you know, Hackensack University Health Center of some sort. Like you mentioned, the Giants logo is going to appear on the outside of the building. The team's going to integrate this partnership into events at MetLife Stadium. Uh, so, Craig, what are your thoughts? Do you think other teams will follow suit, not possibly something at the University of Oregon like this? It's brilliant. Uh, I know there's been a lot of a lot of different pro teams that have partnered with a health care provider to have a clinic, but to actually take it a step further and add the wellness component to it is is a brilliant marketing strategy. I think everybody wants to be a lifestyle brand. You know, we position ourselves. We want to we want to be that uh, in the college space and. You're going to see more and more people follow suit along similar lines because attaching a powerful brand like the New York Giants, one of the most powerful, probably one of the top 20 most powerful brands in at least North American sports uh, to anything is going to drive more traffic in or at least raise that curiosity factor. Uh, and for that association, there's definitely a lot of sponsorship dollars available, but it, it, it can work out even be a win-win when it benefits your brand as well. And in this case, it, it's a no-brainer. Now, it's a no-brainer, again, in theory, but if they execute it poorly and they provide poor customer service or they go away from the Giants' core principles of their brand, then they're going to be in trouble. But I, I don't foresee that. I mean, the Giants are a very well-run organization. Now, Josh, do you think that uh, they made this move uh, not only for the dollars, but because of the fitness trend that is going out there in the world where everybody you know, wants to be healthier and wants to stay as fit as possible, so aligning themselves with this wellness center makes sense? I mean, I think it does. It's, uh, you know, being healthy, uh, being active is very uh, much a part of 
that's the kind of what people are talking about these days more so than they did uh, previously. And, uh, you know, if the Giants have an opportunity to capitalize on that, and like I said, with their, their run of champions they did last year for the first time, and it's, it's happening again this year, um, I think we'll see a lot of crossover between that facility and that race. Um, but also just with the players who live uh, in the community, the staff that lives in the community as well, and all the coaches. Uh, my guess is when the facility opens, they'll be uh, they'll be roaming the hallways quite frequently, uh, more so than they do some other places. Hey, hey, Craig, any last thoughts from you? No, I, again, I, I think it's a brilliant move and uh, something that I think you're going to see more and more teams uh, do because it's a perfect perfect marriage with a professional and college sports teams to tie into wellness and healthcare. Very good. Well, make sure to check out Craig and his staff at GoDucks.com, Josh at the SportsBusinessExchange.com. And I want to thank both you, Craig and Josh, for joining me here today. We'll be back here for SBN Live on Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at SBNow. Also, check out SportsBusinessNow.com online for all of your up-to-date sports news. From all of us here at Sports Marketing Now, thanks for watching and have a great day. SBN. Sports Business Now.